everyone, I'm Jeff Teague, Raleigh, North Carolina. This is Auto Jeff Reviews. Thanks for subscribing. This is the 2023 Mazda CX-50. Over the course of this video, we're gonna review it and we're gonna drive it. Let's walk around the car so we can get a feel for what we're looking at here, what we're talking about. Thanks to Mazda USA over the last week, I've had some seat time, some drive time, been able to really do a deep dive on this one. Look at this Ingo blue color. Watch it change as I move over to the side. Whoa, holla. So this is the Premium Plus. How does that rank with all of the Mazda trim levels? 2023 Mazda has two different engine choices. You can go with the non-turbo or the turbo. This one right here is the turbo, all wheel drive. I'll tell you much more about that, but pricing. This one's about 41,500 factory MSRP. It's the top of the food chain, top of the totem pole. It's the cream of the crop, it rises to the top. So premium plus all the way up here and everything goes down in features and in price. Hey look, it's a hatchback. This is our interior first look. So we're gonna see the black with the brown interior. Really interesting stitch pattern here. Of course Mazda is evolving to the high class, to the luxury market. But this one combines features, luxury, style, and performance. I've been really impressed with it, especially with how it drives. So let's take a look at the back seat. You'll find out exactly how much rear passenger leg room there is. Might be more than you think. Look at all that room. And then we'll look at the back as well. There's a good amount of storage space, as my wife and I found out when we were doing our weekly Costco run. Hey, wonder what that does. Spoiler alert. Look at all the cargo space. We're going to investigate that much further. Let's talk about ride comfort, performance, handling, things like that first. This is Mazda Intelligent Drive. MI, not Michigan. MI-Drive. This is a combination of different drive modes that you can get. Also with the iActive all-wheel drive, the Sky Active G Turbo. Ain't nothing but a Sky Active G thing, baby. So the MI Drive, different drive modes. What are we gonna do here? We're gonna look at the dash and then we're moving right down. Hey, look, I need washer fluid. Wash me. All right, so here we go down to the drive modes. Right down here, there's my Chewbacca. So here we go, MI dash drive. Let's get that into focus. We're going to come up here to the information display. Boom. All right, different drive modes. We've got sport, normal, and off-road. That's right. We can actually take this on the trails if we want to. It's got a high enough ground clearance. It's got that iActive all-wheel drive. And I love how the display changes. So now we've got versatility based on where we want to take it and what we want to do with it. This is the turbo, but there are two different engine choices. You can get the non-turbo or you can get the turbo. This right here, the 2.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine, Sky Active G. Did you like my freestyle earlier? It was awesome. Anyway, what can you get for power? If you use regular unleaded fuel, like I did, 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. That's pretty impressive. Or you can get premium fuel in this bad boy here, and then you're up to 256 horsepower, 320 pound-feet of torque. You could also get the non-turbo. That's gonna be a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine, 186 horsepower, 187 pound-feet of torque. Let's take a look at the front end, and of course that does include the hood. This is simplistic, but it's bold. Look at the lines here. Very pronounced here. And then we go down to that gloss black, three-dimensional. Man, I love that. That is cool. Gloss black in the house. And then we've got the Mazda symbol right here. Look, we've got a camera. Must have 360 surround. But there's so much more to this grill. Look at this here. We've got on the outside the surround. Look at the vertical lines here. So many styles, so many colors, so many textures. LED lights, I'm gonna see if I can show those a little bit better too. Boy, that blue color is brilliant. It has parking sensors in the front, but they're in the rear too. How does this look? 
I wonder what the ground clearance is. The ground clearance here is a surprising 8.6 inches. So really you can go off on the trails. Remember, we've got that iActive all-wheel drive, the off-roading selectable drive mode, and then we've got clearance to clear the brush and the stumps and the rocks and the sticks and things that might get in your way. Where are we taking this one? Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're gonna look at those LED lights. I had a chance to pull it under the shade. Look at these LED lights here the tail lights, and then look at this. It's like, I feel like I'm at the Spirit Halloween store. That is really cool though. Very sporty, we got LED turn signal. Sucker's bright. We're also phasing into the profile view. We'll be talking about that next, so kind of feast your eyes. And then we're gonna look over here, LED lights. LED daytime running lights. Boy, that looks so sinister. And look at that. Da 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 How do you like the front end, my friends? Wheels and tires, 245, 45, R20. So they're 20 inch, two tone alloy wheels. Let's get a little bit closer here. We got to see that Mazda symbol. How do you like the wheels? Now, how do you like the wheels? Now to me, here's what I noticed. Look at the profile, look how sharp that is. It's just a good looking vehicle here. It's classy, it's sporty, it's certainly luxury looking as well. Look at the cladding. And when I say cladding, look at how thick it is all the way around, around the fenders, down below. It's really a bold choice an intentional choice, did it pay off for Mazda? I kind of dig it on this car, and boy do I love that blue color, but look what they did here too. They mixed in chrome, not a lot of chrome, but they mixed in chrome, silver metallic accents, really sharp. They also, interesting Mazda, mixed in gloss black, you can see my shadow again, Look at that. And then we've even got gloss black around the mirrors and right here behind the A-pillar. Very interesting. This has auto lock, auto unlock. Just touch it, grab it, pull it, bop it, all that kind of stuff right there. Has blind spot monitor. We'll see that in action. Right here, right where you're gonna be looking to see if the coast is clear. Hey look, and we've got the fuel tank. The fuel tank size is 15.8 gallons. It gets 23 in the city, 29 on the highway, 25 combined. For me personally, I think I'm at about 24.9 combined. I've been driving it a little bit faster just to see how it accelerates, going up hills, highways, things like that. You'll probably do better. Remember, up to 29 on the highway, you might get more. Just like the front end, the back end has a lot of detail to it. There's a lot going on. Got these three-dimensional LED tail lights at that housing there. Got the matte black honeycomb design on both sides. Backup sensors to match the ones in the front. We've got a camera here, cameras around the side to represent that 360 model. We've got silver metallic lower bumper accent. And then we've got two exhaust pipes. And we'll just take a look underneath. So. Anyone who wants to see gets to see the action as well. We'll look at some of the detail here. Sky Active G thing, baby. Again, three dimensional. And I just really like the slope here. It's not too harsh, it's not too radical. Just a nice, classy looking back end. How's that for a compliment? And then inside, with the seats up, 31.4 cubic feet of storage space. There's more room than you think there is in here. I'm gonna tell you that right now. We got a big storage area. This is to lower the seats. You can put a tonneau cover there. Nice, big, wide, flat surface. And it's wide, it's also tall, so you can stack a lot of things in there, pack a lot of boxes in. Ho! Got this for the front license plate. We've got some soundproofing and we've got our temporary spare tire. 
If you want 56.3 cubic feet of storage space, then you'll put the seats down flat. Next up, I'm going to show you storage for people, the back seat passenger space. But first, I want to just show you soft touch right here. That's nice. Got a place for like a sport bottle if we want to. And then look at the seats. They're nearly flat, but it's a good place to stack your boxes up just like that. Ooh, look, panoramic roof. So here we've got rear seat legroom. Nearly 40 inches, 39.8 inches to be exact. We've got a lot of room here. I've put this all the way back and I've reclined it because we've got a long-legged tall person here who needs to recline a little bit. Well, me, I'm still good. My feet are comfortable back here. And then this is my headroom. I'm five foot eight right now. I'm always five foot eight. Then this one right here, one thing I would probably change is this big giant hump that goes here. So if you're in the middle seat, you're gonna have to straddle, which takes away from a little bit of leg room here for the people on the side. Watch this though. Oh, here we go. Lots and lots of leg room. This is very comfortable. And the seats feel nice too. Let's take a look here. I've raised the rear seat headrest, the middle one, so you can see that it looks like ET. Home, home. Then we've got, let's pull it down. I mean, if there's something to pull, we're gonna pull it, right? Okay, this one right here, nice and squishy. I love the surface area, so we've got some room to put our hands down. We got nice cup holders here. Look at that brown accent stitching. It's pretty cool. The seats are very comfortable. They're leather trim seats. And again, they're very plush. They feel nice. So let's look and see what features might jump out at you. Do we have a pocket here? No. Do we have a pocket here? Yes. So we've got one pocket. We also have, look at this, heated rear seats and nice big vents. We've also got two USBs right here. So that's important as well. All right, and then we'll look from the back. Here's the view. What do you see? What do you like? It's panoramic roof time. I've got both of the doors open. Must be demo time. We're gonna use the whole car for this one. I really like the fact that it has a panoramic roof. It's so nice to be able to get light to the back. Really opens up thing. Boy, it's beautiful outside today. Here's one thing that I would probably improve. I would have the ability to open the glass a little bit more in the front section. That's as far as it goes back, even if you push the button twice. But look at that, it allows light. So I really like that. It really opens up and frankly, it definitely improves the ambiance of an all black interior as well. So I enjoy that. So we're walking inside. We're gonna look at the passenger side. Again, the stitching, it absolutely breaks up the all black interior. I really like that. Soft touch, sport bottle. We're putting it right there. Hey, B-O-S-E, Bose, Bose. Yeah, so this has the 12 speaker Bose sound system. It sounds really nice in here. Sounds like, frankly, concert-like sound, really strong. If you want premium sound, Bose is an excellent choice. This is soft touch all along here. 10.25 inch screen that can be controlled with this multimedia dial, or you can use touch screen in certain situations, so that's good. And now, look at this here. It's firm, but it doesn't get in your way. So it's a nice leather trimmed front headrest here, provides optimal support. This has nice bolstering, doesn't wrap around like a sports car. It's not too loose. It's actually a good mix and it held me in nicely. I felt safe, I felt comfortable, so that's important as well. Now this one is the back of the seat, like that. This one is up, down, upside down. It's turning me. You're giving love instinctively. So it twists. It goes up. It goes down. Ooh, look, CX50 mats. Now, what do we have here? We've got storage space. Take out my... Got storage there. That's nice. Is that where you put the wireless charging? Nope. We've got cup holders here. Boom. Again, that's where you control the radio volume, 
the tuning, push that button down to get to your menu. We've got auto hold, parking brake. But again, where is the wireless? Oh, wait, it's right here. So you've got the wireless charging pad where you can put a phone right here. It's sort of out of the way. You gotta remember it's there because it really is out of the way. And then we've got two USBs here. This is an interesting choice, I think, because I might have put the USBs here, but I see why they were put there because they're out of the way and you can run your cords this way if you need to. Plug in, keep them out of the way. This is nice, soft touch, feels really good. Look at that sport steering wheel. Let's look inside the driver's area. We've got a place for hand sanitizer or a sport bottle, that's nice. We've got power folding side mirrors. That's really handy for garages, car washes, things like that. Soft touch here, easy to use, easy to figure out your adjustments there. Then we've got lumbar support and the same functions here, twist up and down, all that jazz so you can get as comfortable as possible. Now here, this is one thing we have to know that the memory seats are not here like you see on some vehicles, it's right here. So that would be something set one, Holla, set, game, set, match. Then we've got the 360 view, parking sensors. This one right here, this is for the engine stop and start. If you don't want it to shut off at traffic lights, to save fuel, you just push that. So that's something you can look at. Let's look at the camera here. We've got different backup angles. along the sides, 70s on seven. Like I was saying, when you're backing up, you can do different angles. So that's a benefit to you. Don't go past the red, danger zone. I actually really like how clear it is here. Yes, it's a represented model right there, but it is clear, really good graphics. I appreciate that. And then if we want to change, see how it says to push for menu, they're talking about this control dial. Push that and we could do things like source list, favorite, channel list. Just kind of scroll down. If I went the bridge, the Beatles, Pearl Jam, don't call me daughter. And then here definitely looks like a sport steering wheel, leather wrapped, as you'd expect. I think you would expect that. Let's test out the horn. Not bad got some chops to it. It's not like a boat horn, but we don't want it to be a boat horn, do we? All right, so we can do voice commands here, pick up a call, hang up a call. Info that changes what we see on our screen. My MPG is probably gonna be down lower. It needs fluid. So let's just change to see what kind of information we can get there. All right, and then here we've got our adaptive cruise control. We've got our lane departure so you can just keep changing that focus thank you so there's our adaptive cruise boom 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 you can set your speed and you can change the distance between you focus and cars in front of you by tweaking that down or up and this is a really good time to show you the active driving display all right, so right here, look at this. We're changing the distance between us and cars in front of us. That's a big wide distance. That's a smaller distance. You can see our miles per hour, radar cruise, all those type of functions right there, not distracting at all. So I really like that. And remember our drive modes are right here. So let's review. Sport, normal, off-road, Who? All right, so you can also drive it in a simulated manual mode through the use of these paddle shifters right here and right here. So if I want, I could tweak it just like that and go up and down the dial. What else do I like? Well, I love that it has heated steering wheel. I would have really moved that because as I'm sitting here, it's hard to see if that light is on. So now I just look down here, it's on. So we've got heated seats, ventilated seats, 
flashers. Oh my gosh, it's a flasher. All right, there's our push button start. Love it. Boy, this really is a luxurious interior. Let's take a look at the visibility. That's something I'm really impressed with. Sometimes it's hard to show visibility because you can't really see how you're driving. Nice big windshield in the front and the windows along the side. Those are nice too. They're big. Nice big cutout window right there, right? At the back. And then here, if you're not riding with backseat passengers, you can always take that middle headrest off and then you'd be able to see a lot clearer. But yeah, I like the visibility in this. Very few blind spots, that's important. Let's take a look at the blind spot. It's a yellow triangle. Right in the line of vision to see if the coast is clear when you're doing a lane changing maneuver. You're changing. Make that change, as Michael would say. Right there, really good use of blind spot, color, everything. And up top here, we've got LED light. Waka, 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 waka. Just like that. That was either Fozzie Bear or that was Pac-Man. Waka, 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 waka. Waka, waka. Huh? Huh? Waka, waka. Sunglass holder right here, easy to get to. And then we've also got just the interior lights on either side. And then our pano opens at sort of a faster pace, which is nice. Perform the function quickly. This is the window sticker to a similar CX-50, different color choices, not Ingo blue with the black. This is terracotta interior, but it doesn't matter because it's all the same. So let's take a look at standard features here. Feel free to stop the video if you want to see what's exactly standard on this one. It starts at 41,550. Going a little bit closer. Boy, it's hard to, that small print. All right, and then the Premium Plus. This is what's standard by getting the Premium Plus that's upgraded from the Premium. And that'll put it at 43,170. Here's the fuel mileage, just like we said. All right, what do you think? As we begin the test drive, the seats, remember I told you they're comfortable? Leather trimmed, good bolstering down here at the lower part of my back surrounding me, supportive like a best friend. But anyway, they're pretty soft. They're actually pretty comfortable. They feel like they've got good padding in them. And I think that would be good for a long road trip or maybe a daily commute or just riding through the country. Now driving around. This is obviously a sporty vehicle, but it's going more higher end. So what do I feel about the spacing? Ergonomically, just the overall ambiance. I feel like I have a good amount of space. Look, I can reach all the way around. This screen right here, if I'm gonna use it for touchscreen, it's a little bit far. I do have to kind of move forward, but that's not a problem. I could just use the dial down here. A Little bit of a learning curve with the dial, but we all know what that dial does. It has a lot of functions. There's a lot that you can do with it. So that part's nice. I like the knobs here for my digital temperature. Let's just pull out and see what we're gonna do. So when we're on a street that's sort of country, sort of city, you can accelerate, you can pull out into traffic. That's what that tells me very comfortably and have peace of mind that you can do that. So one thing Mazda is always known for is great handling. Does this have great handling? It sure does. This is a fun vehicle drive. So the fun factor for me is pretty high. We get up to speed. Now you're going to hear the turbo engine, but listen at your cruising speed. I hear a little bit of wind noise over here by the mirror, but that's when I'm focused on it. It's not terrible by any means. Don't hear anything coming from the moonroof. You hear a little bit of growl coming from the engine itself, minimal road noise, but overall it's a nice ride. If I needed to pass a vehicle, It's just that easy. Just that easy, my friends. Now some features I could use here. I could use the adaptive cruise control. I'll put that on here, set my speed. 
and then also set my distance. So what it does is it keeps me a pace behind that vehicle. Whether I want a big one, I can set it right here. I can also adjust it on my active driving display, just like that. Pretty impressive, really. With my lane departure, if I go outside of the lane, it's gonna actually feel that vibration, like almost like you're driving in the gravel. So it lets you know physically with that tactile response that you're outside of your lane. So I do appreciate that. I think that's a great safety feature because we've all been distracted from time to time. This is designed to keep you straight and safe and in your lane. And remember with this turbo engine, you have two choices for power and two choices for what you pay at the pump as well. You can get premium fuel, then you're getting 256 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque, or you can just do unleaded. Do you need the extra power? Probably not. 227 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. We don't all drive it like that, but just giving you an idea what it sounds like, what it can do. Got to beat that line. Nice, smooth speed bump there. This has pretty soft suspension, so you don't feel a lot of the speed bumps that you get if you go over a little bit too fast. Well, just don't go over them too fast. But it's comfortable, doesn't hurt you. When you're going around turns, it tightens up. So let's try going around an on-ramp to get on to a road that's 55 miles an hour and then we'll get onto the highway where we're at 70. Check the handling here. Are we in control of our ride? Oh yeah. That was really impressive. Really nice. So I think what I'll do when I get up here, we can put it into different drive modes. Remember we've got off-road, that really wouldn't be appropriate. Normal certainly is appropriate, but I wanna put it into sport mode so that we can see accelerating from zero to 60, let's say, but going up a hill when we do it. So this will be an interesting test, my friends. Walk on the ocean. We're listening to Pop Rocks. You can see it's on the screen right here. This has wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. So I really like that. I can play my Apple Music. Easy stuff. So here we go. Put it into sport mode. And there's nobody behind me. Here we go. 40, 50, 60, 70. That was really cool. I'll tell you, this car has some zoom to it. It has some zip to it. Let's listen to the sound as we're at their cruising speed now. set my speed at 73 what's interesting too is it says sport mode canceled because I'm in the auto cruise control so it's got to be a normal mode for that oh yeah we're passing a forerunner we are legit here's our active driving display right there so we can see exactly what we're doing for speed and what we've got it set at We'll see how it does on an off-ramp. That's very nice. Let's test out the blind spot. Look at that. Shows you when the coast is not clear. All in all, I find CX-50 has zip to it. It's got some spunk, it's got some power, it's got some speed, but it's also got luxury features as well. Smooth, comfortable, it's a lot of fun to drive. I think you'll be impressed and I think you should try it too. Thanks for watching everybody. Let me know what you think of the CX-50. Are you a fan? How about this Ingo blue color? How about the black interior? What features stood out to you? 
What driving impressions did you get from this video? Hopefully it was helpful whether you're researching it or whether you just bought one and you want to learn more. All right, thanks so much. Please hit subscribe to join my channel. And also, I'm on Instagram and TikTok at Auto Jeff Reviews. Thanks, everybody, so much. See you next time.